Oh wow. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, whenever you're ready, I'll be I'll be ready. Okay. So I'm. A, when you my, hear my clap, then I'm I'm uh, starting my intro. Okay. You have me clap. Yeah. Okay. Just turn it down. Okay, turn it down. Okay, Twitch has accepted the stream. YouTube has accepted the stream. Okay, Facebook has accepted the stream. Hold on, I got to do one more thing. Do you have your timer ready, Deidre? Uh, Just turn it off, I guess. Okay. Yes, I have it ready. You have it ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm going to do the clap using this thing. And when I do it, hit the button that starts the timer, okay? Okay. All right, here we go. Peace and greetings. You are now listening to Talking Peace. I am your host, Deidre Email, Executive Director of the Western New York Peace Center. And today we are going to talk about Kwanzaa and its significance and um, its significance in the healing of the African American community. Uh, before we get started, we always give thanks. Uh, we want we want to give thanks for uh, the earth, the living creatures upon the earth, the living creatures within the waters, clean and fresh waters, the creatures that dwell in the air, the birds, the insects, our plants, our medicinal plants, our trees, our soil, our worms and our insects that help to provide nutrients to the plants and foods that we eat. We like to give thanks for all things, for the love that abounds in the earth and that we hope to continue to share um, throughout. So, and uh, as we finish, uh, we say Ashe, and Yahweh and you know. So thank you everyone for coming uh, and coming on uh, Talking Peace with us today. And um, so today we have uh, Mother Sharon Holly of Zawadi Books and also um, a renowned storyteller and Carlanda Meadows uh, which is the president or chair of the Buffalo Kwanzaa Committee. Yes, one of and the co Say it one more time. Co-chair, yes. Co-chair of the Buffalo Kwanzaa Committee. And uh, so we want to talk about a little bit of the history of Kwanzaa in Buffalo and its uh, significance now, especially as we have gone through um, such a, a year um, in 2022 um, through the things we've we've been through as an African-American community. Um, so first I want to go around and um, ask, you know, what values you want to bring uh, to this discussion tonight or today? Okay, I guess I'll start. <laughs> sure. oh, so we want to bring the value of knowledge and information, first of all. We acknowledge that Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday rooted in African traditions. Mm -hmm. The holiday was created by Dr. Milana Karinga in 1966, so it's relatively a new holiday, mm -hmm. which means that even though it's celebrated throughout the U.S. and in many other countries on the continent, um, many other countries in the world, I should say there's still a lot of misunderstanding about what Kwanzaa is and people confusing it with Christmas or thinking it's Black Christmas. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the value that I want to bring up today is really about 
uh, knowledge and information. Wonderful. Absolutely. Herlanda? Yes, I, I concur to the same thing. I'm sorry, I don't know why my video keeps going out. Um, what I what the value that I would bring, of course, as well is information and just getting everybody excited and involved so they can come and celebrate with us in the spirit of Umoja, which will be unity. I say, yes. Um, I think I bring the value of uh, you know, you know, agreed on uh, both parts. And uh, like you said, I think that there's a lot of misinformation um, and uh, understanding open-mindedness um, and hopefully uh, cross-culture, you know, intersectional um, of people understanding the cross-cultural awareness and um, to the intersectionality of the the principles um that that needs to be profound across communities um i think so thank you for that um and uh before i forget i do want to say thank you to richard wicca our producer um and uh and uh, wbny 91.3 fm uh, for their consistency and, you know, wonderful um, exposure uh, for us on Mondays. So uh, what, Ms. Sharon, I heard that um, you, you know, the history of, um, of Kwanzaa in Buffalo, and I wanted to get more information for, from you, if you can share with the audience, um, you know, what you know about Kwanzaa starting in Buffalo and, you know, basically how, how did it get started here and what is it? Okay, well, first of all, it's a, it's a cultural holiday. Uh, I just want to say that first of all, it is not a religious holiday as some people have called it, uh, Kwanzaa being a religion, but it is not a religious holiday, it's a cultural holiday. So as I mentioned earlier, the holiday was created by Dr. Milana Karenga in 1966. Mm -hmm. Some of the early institutions that had Kwanzaa programs in Buffalo were the Watu Center, the Center for Positive Thought, which was at 11 East Utica, and that involved the Black Dance Workshop and those members that created that. Also, the African American Cultural Center at 350 Maston. They were one of the early uh, supporters of one of the early groups that organizations that promoted Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. And the Watu Center, which was on Jefferson Avenue. So these organizations that I mentioned, um, probably not in 1966, but soon afterwards, mm -hmm. had Kwanzaa programs introducing Kwanzaa to Buffalo's African-American community. So in the, I'd say late seventies, my husband and I, Kenneth and I, uh, were operating Harambe bookstore in the city of, of Buffalo. And we started calling meetings with organizations to form a Kwanzaa committee. A lot of people thought that we organized the first Kwanzaa, but we did not. Uh, our role was to try to coordinate organizations who would be celebrating Kwanzaa and bring them together in a citywide Kwanzaa committee. Mm -hmm. So the meetings were held at Harambe Bookstore. Can y'all hear her? Mm -hmm. Miss Holly, yeah. I think you muted yourself. No, I can hear her. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, I'm not muted. Okay. Um, okay, so in the, the meetings were held at Harambe Bookstore. Different organizations and interested people from the community would come together. What we were doing at that time was to say, instead of each organization having one night of Kwanzaa and forget the rest of the six days, why don't we try to coordinate and move from organization to organization. So for example, 
like the Hughes Institute could have Kwanzaa on opening night. And at that Kwanzaa on opening night, not only would there be some cultural contributions and history and maybe speakers, but also someone from that organization would be able to talk about what they do. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what do we do in the community? What programs do we offer? Uh, how, how are we helping the community? The next night it might move to uh, the Moot Center and, and uh, the Fruit Belt. Mm -hmm. And then it might move to a school. So Kwanzaa was moving around to different groups and we, people were asked to follow the Knights of Kwanzaa. Uh, when you go to the African Culture Center, if you went to Center for Positive Thought or Langston Hughes or any of the other centers. Also what the committee did was to try to establish an opening and closing that would be the same. So mm -hmm. that everybody knew when you came to Kwanzaa, there was going to be an introduction. Uh, someone was going to explain the symbols that they saw on the stage. Uh, someone would be given a libation so that this would be consistent in all of the nights that Kwanzaa was celebrated. And then on the feast night, of course, we had asked uh, people from the community to donate food, to cook food and bring it. Mm -hmm. So some nights it was like a feast, and some nights it was almost like a famine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we, <laughs> a famine. We, al we always had enough there for folks. We had asked people to um, bring a dish, no pork, uh, no red meat, no alcohol, you mm -hmm. know. But bring fruit, or if you didn't cook it, you know, purchase something, purchase a dessert, uh, bring a beverage, and people could eat free, you know, as long as the food was there, just eat it as much as you want. And it was open to anybody in the community. You didn't have to be a celebrant of Kwanzaa. If it was at a community center and you lived nearby and the feast was that night, you're welcome. <laughs> you know, come in, get a plate, eat and uh, communicate with everyone. Also, uh, throughout the years, other people began to add other things to what we were doing in Buffalo. For example, Dr. Kofi Lamote and Dr. Mwalimu Shuja came to Buffalo and they said, well, in California, uh, when Kwanzaa falls within a Saturday, that's, we have children's Kwanzaa. So we said, oh, that's a great idea. So mm -hmm. we incorporated a Saturday. If whatever Saturday that fell within those seven days, that daytime program would be Children's Kwanzaa. And Children's Kwanzaa was a chance to explain Kwanzaa to children in a way they can understand, but also have some fun. So we would have arts and crafts, and we went on scavenger hunts. Um, I recall we rented skate land and bought skates for all the kids so that they could skate free, you know, and yeah. uh, we would feed them, feed them afterwards, and, and everybody was, was having a good time. So the Kwanzaa Committee was really trying to put out information about what Kwanzaa is, trying to um, correct some of the misconceptions that people had about Kwanzaa, because a lot of folks were resistant. It, it was very new. They didn't know what it was, and they thought, yo, you're trying to stop me from celebrating Christmas. No, we're not. This comes the day after Christmas, so if you celebrate Christmas, which is supposed to be a religious holiday, <laughs> you are free to celebrate Christmas and go to church, and on the 26th, go to Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, that was kind of like how it began in terms of the committee work in Buffalo. Wow, that is, that's beautiful. Wow, I didn't know. Um, but, you know, the committee is so important um, with organizing, you know, to, to get anything off the ground, you know? So to me, that was a significant, you know, part um, that, you know, even having a place for people to come together and say, okay, 
you know, a, a common place. I remember Harambe books at Fillmore and Utica. Yes. Um, that, you know, that was like my hangout spot. <laughs> Mine too. It's like, oh my God. I, I, was like, I thought it was Harambe before it was Zawadi. Like, yes, yes. Yeah, it was just a safe space, you know, community space. So, um, you know, I really, you know, uh, understand the the work that, you know, involved to bring everybody together. Um, I think we kind of, we try to do that now, but sometimes we can, um, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's just a little bit harder and trying to bring everybody together at the same table at the same time. Right. I, I just want to say that even though um, Kenneth and I spearheaded the committee and you know, co-chaired it for about 25 years, wow. you know, you know, we were willing to give up that part of it. We still participate in Kwanzaa in the community and especially at home. But we were very happy to see younger people step up, you know, do it differently, do some things differently, bring in a different um, crowd of, of people but still continue the tradition. And that I think that's very important. Yes, and speaking of new chairs, Car Carlanda, what you know, what do you have to say um to to what uh Mother Sharon has said about, you know, just continuing uh the traditions and and keeping um groups together? Well, first I want to say my co-chair is Emmanuel Rafford, who okay. is the son of Samuel Rafford whose father participated in Kwanzaa since he was born. And my aunt, Peggy Heath, God rest her soul, um, participated in Kwanzaa as an elder. And ever since I was born, like, so it was like, um, you know, we came to the Kwanzaa meetings as children. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an option. Sometimes I felt forced, but... <laughs> You know, the meetings and partic participating in Kwanzaa. When you're a kid, sometimes you don't know what's going on. But it was like one of the most exciting events because it was drumming and dancing. I always remember the African drumming, the African dancing. Like, where else do you get to see the African drumming and dancing? Right. But then um, as you get older, you learn the importance of Kwanzaa. You learn the meaning of Kwanzaa. You understand the principles of Kwanzaa. And um, the way we were raised, we were brought up as a lifestyle, these principles. So it's a way of life. And as you mature into an adult, you teach your kids and you do more than just come into the committee. And, and even the committee meetings was like a time that it were, they always been on Fridays. Since I've known Kwanzaa, it's always been Fridays at seven o'clock. Sometimes it means we'll go seven to 11 o'clock. Um, I think, um, yeah, we, seven to 11 o'clock, like no doubt long meetings. And when she talks about something different, we try and keep our meetings now seven to eight, like in a, a hour time. Sometimes we go to nine o'clock, but mm -hmm. because of the gathering with the elders, you didn't want to go home. It wasn't like a regular traditional business meeting. It was more like gathering with family and friends to, come together to, you know, discuss and plan such a wonderful, meaningful event. Mm -hmm. And I I can only, you know, pay homage to the fact that I'm even in this position or chair of Kwanzaa because of the leadership of the Hollies. I mean, 25 years consistently, um, you know, when we, we talk about tradition, we know that the way that they carried on Kwanzaa is meant to go. Certain things just can never be changed no matter who's coordinating that. And I think a lot of times that's what law, that's what's lost and how people do things because the elders is the wisdom. Mm -hmm. The elders is the knowledge, they're the strength. And younger people have this attitude, ah, uh, they don't know anything or it's a new way in life. It's a new way to do things. No, no, some things are kept and have longevity because the tradition of it is maintained. And mm -hmm. so we appreciate that. We respect that. And, you know, we add our little ideas here and there and the elders be like, no, no, no. Y'all not about <laughs> to put this up in here. And we respect that and we we honor their requests. Mm -hmm. um, trying to keep things innovative because, you know, things are changing every day. 
-hmm. But some things should always remain the same. You know, like God say, I'm here today. I'm the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. So when it comes to Kwanzaa, we want to maintain the torch. That I thank God they passed the torch down because some people don't. But they passed it down in a way that was like giving. Like, you know, like, yeah, come in, keep it going, but remember the importance of the tradition. And mm -hmm. so, I, you know, that that to me is very important. And it's just the spirit of the Nguza Saba. This is the principles that we live and that we discuss. But we got that from our elders, like Ms. Holly. So and what I'm does Kwanzaa mean? Uh, what does the word Kwanzaa mean? And what are these seven principles that um, you just talked about? And anybody can... Um, well, Kwanzaa, the word Kwanzaa comes from the Kiswahili language spoken in East Africa. And Kwanzaa, K-W-A-N-Z-A, -A, with just one A, means first fruits. So it was part of a harvest festival tradition in many parts of Africa. When Dr. Milana Karenga created the holiday, he added the second A, <laughs> which was now K-W-A-N-Z-A-A. -A. And he had said in one of his books that he added the seven, the, he added the extra A because at the first Kwanzaa he had seven kids and he, he wanted all of them to be able to participate in the spelling of Kwanzaa. But he has done studies throughout Africa and had gathered many of the harvest festival traditions and brought them into a unique celebration that he called Kwanzaa. So when it was first started, of course, people would say, oh, they don't celebrate Kwanzaa in Africa. And many times they were correct. There was the holiday as we know it was not originated on the African continent. Now, it is celebrated in Africa now because we took it there. <laughs> as we have taken it to South America, New Zealand, <laughs> and everywhere else on the continent, people know about Kwanzaa. And I say that because often we don't want to give the credit uh, that we have of something that we have created. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, we want to, to give the credit away. But it's a creation of an African-American man uh, that created it here. So now Kwanzaa was an outgrowth of um, philosophy called Kawaida. And the Kawaida had seven principles to them that we used during Kwanzaa. And each seven day of Kwanzaa represents one of those principles of the Kawaii, which was the black value system. Okay. So the first day was uh, Umoja, which meant unity. And the second day was Kuji Chakalia, meaning self-determination. The third day, Ujima, means collective work and responsibility. The fourth day was Ujima, which represented um, cooperative economics. The fifth day was Nia, that represents purpose. The mm -hmm. sixth day, Kaumba, that represents creativity. And the seventh day, Imani, which represents faith. Now, during Kwanzaa, we always start with Umoja and in a Kwanzaa setup, there are seven candles, three red, one black, and three green. The black candle is in the middle, and it is the first candle that you light on the first day of Kwanzaa, and it represents Umoja. And without Umoja, unity, you can't light the rest of the candles. It, it wouldn't make sense. Okay. And you light the candles from black, then red, then green, because red even though through Marcus Garvey teaching, red represents the blood and black represents the people um, and green represents the land in Kwanzaa. Of course, the black candle first, red is also struggle and green, green is land. You can't have, a, you can't have what you, your future unless you struggle for it. So it's always black, red, then green, red, then green, red, then green. Okay. 
Well, I didn't know that there was a, um, a, a an order in that you know way as far as how to light, and it's just a a refreshing. Uh, it's been a long time <laughs> since you know how you just like okay I just you know you just know but then you don't know you know some some basic things you got to like refresh and like oh, okay there is an actual order you know to you know to how things are done or a cere you know a ceremonial way and it's a reason uh, for ceremony you know. Um, right. And that that explains why the committee that was the importance of having the committee. The right. committee was to uh, teach what these symbols were and so that everybody would be on the same page, mm -hmm. you know, so you wouldn't have somebody saying, oh, I'm going to light the red candles first and then I'm going to light the green ones, then I'll write the black at the end. No, mm -hmm. that's not how the house is. Oh, <laughs> candles or yellow candles. Why they got to be red, black, and green? Exactly. No. <laughs> right, because you're teaching a new tradition. And um, well, from what I hear or what I've read, um, as far as it came out of, you know, uh, Mr. Karenga's um, wanting people to come, come together after the Watts riots. Is that accurate? So, That's somewhat part of it because he was part of that um, that black movement during during the sixties. Okay, okay, and going back to like why you like the unity, you know, candle first, and thinking about the context of you know of, of that time, you know, and want to bring you know um, black people together, you know, in a more positive um, energy, you know, to produce more positive. Uh, results um, in our community um, to me is even more significant like looking at the you know the time and context of just not just like oh yeah you know it would be great for us to have unity but it's just like hey you know we had unity to destroy let's have unity to build you know um, <laughs> you know, I, I learned yesterday from um, Brother Holly that he was 25 when he started this, and Dr. Karanga is now in his 80s. I believe he's 81. So just knowing that um, at that age, you know, when we're in our 20s, we're innovative, we're creative. But to know that he started something and put the energy towards it and was consistent, who knew? I'm, I'm curious to know that when he, at 25, did he know that it would be, you know, 56 years later and Kwanzaa still would be carrying on? So it's really inspiring to think that an idea that um, started and it's still carrying on. And then it makes me wonder how come we haven't, how come no one else has done something like this? You know, how come we haven't created something else? So it's just very inspiring to know that what he started is still here. And I, and once again, I think that goes to the, um, our elders being consistent and the strength, because just think about how many businesses open up and close down. Think about how many organizations start and fall apart. Think about how many, you know, things people have started in the sake, for the sake of unity, and then certain devices come through and divide it. But Kwanzaa is still here, and it's just getting bigger and better. And nobody celebrates Kwanzaa like Buffalo to me. I think I'm going to say it on here. Buffalo has one of the best and biggest celebrations, not just our Kwanzaa, but our Juneteenth as well. Um, one of the things that we try to do this year is to connect other cities. Um, I travel a lot and mm -hmm. I went to Atlanta a couple of months ago and they have the new Black Street Mall there. And I mean, it's a mall. All the stores are African-American. The owner, the developer, everything is African-American. And it's just mind-blowing how amazing and how beautiful it is. And I went around to all the vendors, like, if I can get y'all to come to Kwanzaa and come to Juneteenth, that would be amazing. But, you know, timing-wise, it couldn't happen. But we wanted to include them in the magazine. We have Living Kwanzaa magazine that we do every year to include them and to honor that developer of that site. So trying to get connect Atlanta, because, you know, people in Buffalo love to go to Atlanta, and they love to go to Charlotte. So we did the same thing with Charlotte. So this year, we're trying to expand to other cities because they they celebrate Kwanzaa, but they might have one event, you know, during a week or 
um, you know, Atlanta's like, what you can do for Kwanzaa, well, these are the different people, and they're all different people doing a different event to celebrate one day. But it's mm -hmm. like, we, we've been doing this for years. Like, <laughs> we have, you know, all seven days celebrated, which yeah. to me shows that we have something that we can offer the next city, you know, so we want to create Buffalo like the hub of Kwanzaa and connect with other cities to say, hey, this is how we're doing it and let's work together. So that's something new that we're doing this year. Right. I'd also want to add, you know, like how Kwanzaa spread. Mm -hmm. uh, when Dr. Karinga created the holiday, of course, he was in California, but there were some organizations in the states that were I would say African-centered organizations and schools from the 60s and 70s that had started. One was the East in Brooklyn. Uh, there was the Center for Positive Thought in Chicago, uh, the Hediana School in New Orleans. So the ideas about Kwanzaa and the celebration kind of spread to these organizations who then spread in the communities, you know, so it was like organization to organization uh, kind of spreading Kwanzaa. The other thing that was significant about Buffalo's Kwanzaa was Dr. Milana Karenga made it a point to come to Buffalo during Kwanzaa. And that is very unusual because there were countries and cities all over asking him to be present during the week of Kwanzaa in their city. And somehow he always managed to put Buffalo on the list. And I recall once someone said, why do you always come to, to Buffalo? What is it about Buffalo? And he remarked that it's the people. It's the people in Buffalo that makes him feel welcome, you know, that come out, the, the warm hospitality, um, that he brings when he comes out. So we always felt very good that he would include Kwanzaa on his list, you know, except for times of illness. And now that when COVID came in, everything kind of stopped. So I don't know where things are now uh, with his traveling. But he always made it a point uh, to come to Buffalo to participate. And it was a teachable moment. Some people have asked, well, why do we have to hear Dr. Karinga? And you have to think about that question. Who would not like to hear the creator of a holiday in person speaking to you, answering your questions, you know, while you hear him speak? It's a historic moment. Right. And so we were, we were always grateful and appreciative of the fact that he could come here. And he, he did that for years. Am I correct? I mean, yes. I remember always seeing on the schedule, you know, that he, you know, he was speaking on one of those days. Um, if not the first day, it'll be like one of those days uh, of Kwanzaa. He was coming. right. There were a few places that he always went. One was Buffalo. The other was New York City. And I think maybe somewhere down south. I don't know if it was Atlanta or where, but I know Buffalo and New York was almost always on the schedule. And he would always be back in California uh, for the last day. Okay. That is right. And we hope we haven't got um, full co confirmation at this moment, but we have reached out. And we're just waiting to hear back if he is going to be joining us in person this year. Okay. okay. Let's see. Awesome. He's like in his 80s now, right? Yeah, I believe 81, if I'm not mistaken, 81. Still traveling and wow. We'll give him the word. Now, question. So with all that, the celebration and the significance um, of this holiday, what do you think, um, how, how, how can this help to, how can this help the um, African-American community in Buffalo after 514, you know, especially? You know, what, how, how does this, you know, is, is, this, is this significant? you know, right now, and how can it help to um, to heal our community? I think first, people would have to, um, and I'm getting a low battery mode here, <laughs> so I'm saying, but people would have to um, know and practice 
those seven principles, um, which is, it's not an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm not going to say, oh, it's just that simple. But if you read them and if you read what they're about and you uh, put them into practice, it is like a healing meditation okay. um, for those who who would who would follow them, who would understand uh, what they are about. I think that's really um, interesting that you say that because like I think it was Carlanda you said earlier that it's a lifestyle. And when people really think about, you know, each principle and how they can practice it. And then as, as we look at that as a family, you know, in our families and in our community, it, you know, like you said, it's, it's really, it's not as easy as we think because we have to come out of a mindset, you know, you know, of a Amer you know, Americanized, you know, capitalistic mindset to start thinking, you know, in a, you know, in a, in a, in a completely like different mindset of collective thought, collective action. Um, you know, what does cooperative economics really mean, you know, as opposed to, you know, just, you know, buying black, <laughs> you right. know, what, does, what does that really mean in Africa, you know, and, uh, uh, historically and so on. So, you know, I agree. I, I think that it, it is a, um, uh, easier said than done, but if people really meditated on that and walked in that, it would make some big changes, I think, in our community. And you will have a much more peaceful life. Like, you know, we embody the principles of Kwanzaa. And so when you operate from that, because that's our true nature as African people anyways. So when you operate off of that, you just have peace and love and serenity and you know, you don't have a lot of chaos and confusion in your life when you live these principles. You know, things tend to go a little bit smooth. And I believe that, you know, it could be difficult, but anything that you strive for and you put the right energy forth to it, it just becomes easier and easier as you do it. So this is why it's so important for us to educate and share the information. I applaud you for having us on here to do that. Um, another great thing about Kwanzaa is the vending opportunity. Um, for businesses to come to show, you know, their wares and, you know, you can come and get your African clothing, your shea butter, your earrings mm -hmm. and soaps. And it just always expands to, you know, the books the Zawadi books have. And we tend to have new vendors every year. The food is always good. There's still opportunities to vend. If anybody wants to vend or advertise, they can contact me at 716 800-1348. That's 716-800-1348. Um, and it's an opportunity for people to see as family and to support each other. Um, one of the things that we are doing different this year, and I, I'm, I'm giving y'all the, the, the special announcement um, because it hasn't been made public yet, but uh, we always want to pay homage to our elders that have passed. And, you know, this is a significant year, Kwanzaa, because we have lost so many people, like due to COVID and you know, the Buffalo 10. And I feel like our community has just suffered so much loss this year. I know, you know, I just did a list today. I've lost 13 people within the past three years. They were very dear and close to me. You know, my, my aunt, Peggy Heath, who taught me about Kwanzaa, my father, my first cousin, Julia Heath, then even my son, you know, my 23-year-old son, Darren, who was a part of Kwanzaa, and then different community leaders. So we took the principles and we um, dedicated each principle to an elder that represented that principle so we can pay homage and always, you know, remember that elder and say their name. But we're also going to honor a person that's living with us that embodies that principle. So I just wanted to say real quick, those names uh, for Emoja, it'll be the Bill Peoples, rightfully so, Emoja Award, which represents unity. And the recipients of that is no other than Sharon and Kenneth Holly, of course. So definitely want to celebrate Mother Holly and her husband for that, for the Emoja Award, uh, for Kuji Chakalia, self-determination, that is Peggy Heath, 
Um, that's who's going to be honored. My aunt, so the Peggy Heath Award, and the recipient is L. Nathan Hare of that award. Mm -hmm. The um, third principal, Ujima, which is Collective Work and Responsibility. We have honored and named that award the Derek M. Bird Jr. Award. Everybody, I'm sure, knows Mr. Bird. And the recipient of that award will be Pastor James Giles of the mm -hmm. Buffalo Peacemakers. Um, for four, Ujima Cooperative Economics is um, Lonnie Harrell, um, who definitely we dedicate all our vending to. And the honoree of that is Miss Betty Jean Grant. Right. So you know, she's going to be very excited. Um, for Nia, the Purpose Award is being honored of Elder Lorna Hill. Yeah. And the recipient of that would be Miss Sheila Brown. Right. And the next one for Kuamba, which is creativity. Um, that is in honor of Baba Simba Lee. Mm. But we all miss Brother Simba, and the recipient will be Alnisa Banks. Wonderful. Yes, and for the last principal of Amani, which is Faith, uh, Mother Agnes Baines, and the recipient of that will be um, Brother Sam Rafford. Wonderful. I I say. That this will be the first time that we do it, and we hope to do it annually and continue to um pay homage to those that have passed but also to those that embody and live the principles of kwanzaa so uh when can are you doing uh are you giving out these awards each day or are you or, or all in one day so people can come out and support yeah each night they will get the award yes wow that's exciting and so well deserved for yeah. each every person so well deserved and it was just so thought you know thoughtful for each um award you know um you know it's just it's just you know it's right on time just right on time so yes thank you for that um now you know going forward how can people uh do you have a schedule yet for kwanzaa this year yes we do um and, you know, some things are still tentative because we have some performers and things to add. We still have people who are interested in performing. Obviously, they can call. Our theme this year is Lift Every Voice. Um, so for the first night, um, we're going to start at Performing Arts. That's the kickoff, which is major because Kwanzaa used to always be at Performing Arts. And then, um, you know, they had to go through remodeling and we couldn't have it at Performing Arts anymore. And finally, we got it back. Right. <laughs> so it's very exciting to have the kickoff of Kwanzaa at Performing Arts um, this year. And um, that day, we'll be having the Western New York Storytellers. Um, the Superintendent Williams will be doing a welcome address. Of course, Mayor Byron Brown will be doing an address. He does it every year. Access to Africa will be there. That is the drummers. And we're also doing a dedication to the Buffalo Tent. So that's performing arts all nights of Kwanzaa is from 7 to 9 p.m. Um, the following days, we're going to be at Delavan Grider Community Center. So Tuesday, um, the African-American Culture Center, that's their night. So it'll be drummy. They do the whole program. So they'll have different um, presentations. Um, Wednesday, it is going to be um, Daughters of Creative Sound. We're hoping to have Dr. Karinga come in that night and do the question and answer session. If not, uh, we might have Dr. Henry Taylor be the keynote speaker. So that one we're still working on. Um, Thursday, we're gonna have a panel discussion because it's cooperative economics and the discussion will be on education, mm -hmm. um, health, wellness, finances, a lot of information. We have a couple of different speakers for that, for the panel. So they're still working that out, but that is a day where you can come and actually learn how to empower yourself and your family for the betterment of our community. Um, Friday night, um, that is the Neo Soul night. So Wuffo is going to be there. They're going to lead it. I believe we might be live to air. Um, Brother Ross Muata is the DJ. So Power 96.5, we want to have like a Neo Soul line, have a good time. People can come out, sing, open mic, and dance. So we really plan to have a good time um, that night. And, you know, we're looking for people to sing and perform as well. And then Saturday, um, Saturday during the day, Children's Kwanzaa, which is from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., 
Wakanda Alliance is going to be leading that and Sister Star, and we're having it in Zone 1. So it's interesting to be at the skating rink. And, you know, what Holly had mentioned back in the day for Children's Kwanzaa for skating. So it's a blessing that this year we will have it at skating um, and we'll have activities for them and, of course, provide food. So that's 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And then that night we have the Karuma Feast where we all get together, break bread and eat and have open mic. And then um, ending out always with Mother Doyle on January 1st, that will be virtual and she will give a keynote address. Okay. So that is basically the tentative schedule so far. Wonderful, wonderful. And, um, <laughs> but it's also in the Challenger as well. And it'll also be posted on the Buffalo Kwanzaa, the official Buffalo Kwanzaa Facebook page. And it'll also be on our YouTube page. And if anybody wants to vent or have any questions, you can email me at buffalokwanzaa at yahoo.com. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. And uh, Mother Holly, did you have something that, that you wanted to say? I'm no, a... I'm just looking forward to the activities. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get busy decorating my home for Kwanzaa. I'm a little uh... late this year, but uh, <laughs> I'll have it up. <laughs> I'll be ready. <laughs> now, um, do you have things at uh, Zawadi Books that people can um, purchase to get ready uh, for Kwanzaa and or with educational books or the um, the the um, candles or you know do you have things for people to get ready? Yes, we do sell the uh, Kwanzaa sets, which consist of the Kanara, the candle holder, uh, a mat, uh, the Unity cup, and the seven candles. So we do have that there at the store. We do not have, excuse me. Um, the books by Dr. Karenga right now, they are not, they are not in. Uh, and we have some Kwanzaa banners. We have the red, black, and green flags there as well. And of course, we have all kinds of books, maybe not on Kwanzaa, but certainly educational <laughs> books for all ages, from kids to adults. That's the official. That's the official. Get ready for Kwanzaa store right there. Right, exactly. <laughs> and can I say uh, and cards? Have Kwanzaa cards too. Yeah. Okay, and and Zawadi's Books is the only African American um, bookstore in Buffalo, um, and I want to say Western New York, but I'm definitely in Buffalo. So please, you know, come out and support. Um, Your location. Five years, huh? Give the location of Zawadi Books. Yes. We're at 1382 Jefferson Avenue, across from Jim Bell Cleaners, if you need a landmark. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and between uh, Woodlawn and Glenwood. Beautiful, beautiful. And now you mentioned, uh, we have about five more minutes. You mentioned um, Matt, a uh, mat. And you mentioned um, uh, Unity Cup. Unity Cup. Can you explain what these other symbols um, are and why people should get them to celebrate um, at home? Right. There, there is a, a, a setup for it. The the mat is uh, is like a straw woven mat. You know, I it could really be a place mat, mm -hmm. and uh, that is considered the foundation. So a lot of your symbols should be able to rest on the foundation. It's as if you're building a house, you put the foundation on first. You don't start with the roof. So you put the foundation down, that would be your mat. Uh, second um, symbol would be the Kanara, which is a, a candle holder, which will hold seven candles. Now, not to be confused with a menorah, Right. which is part of Jewish Hanukkah celebrations. Mm -hmm. And some people have tried to adapt the shape of the menorah mm -hmm. to make it look like Kwanzaa, but it, it, it's not, you know. Right. So I, I'm not saying go buy a menorah and put your Kwanzaa candles in it. No, don't do that. <laughs> so, so if you don't have a Kanara, use seven candle holders separate candle holders, you know. Yeah. Also, you have the candles, which are called Mashuma Saba, seven candles, three red, three green, and one black. 
and they're in the order of three red on the left, one black in the middle, three green on the right. There is also a unity cup, Kikombe Cha Umoja, which is used to pour libation. And in family celebrations, we drink from the cup and say Harambe, but that is not advised in public celebrations. <laughs> and we probably don't do it that much in the family now since COVID. <laughs> so we just kind right. of pass it around. Symbolic now. <laughs> also on your table, but which we do not have, is you should have fruits. Um, any kind of fruits and fruits and vegetables that symbolize the harvest and a piece of corn. And we, we've we used Indian corn in the past or whatever corn you can get. Corn represents children. And you should have as many ears of corn on the table as you have children in the household. If you have no children in the household, you should have at least one ear of corn for the potential for children. Wow. And also on your table should be the bandera, which is the flag, red, black, and green flag should be on the table. And zawadi, which is a Kiswahili word for gift. So that gift can be a book or a heritage symbol. I've seen people put pieces of sculpture or book or doll or, you know, some handmade something, but it should be on, on your table as well. And they love the gifts, the seven days of gifts, because my granddaughter is like, ooh, I get gifts for seven days. I can't wait. I'm like, uh-huh, we're going to start real small and work our way up. <laughs> well, we only give them on the last day. The, last. <laughs> the, the children and the grandchildren know mm -hmm. you will not get anything for Christmas, but you will get a gift on January the 1st. And one of those, one of those gifts is going to be a book. That's right. <laughs> I know the education. Likewise. Say it again, Carolina. I said likewise, Delilah will be getting books and cards from Sawadi Books. I'm going to have to make a trip without her. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. I think that, you know, uh, it's, you know, it's always about education, education and continuing the legacy and the history and the culture that we continue to hold on to for the last 400 years, you know, we have pieces that, you know, we continue to hold on to. Um, and as we learn more, we can, we can grasp, you know, more from our West African and our um, various African descent, um, uh, and, and so that's exciting to me um, uh, that we do that and that we include those principles throughout the year. We include, you know, this, you know, our culture, of course, throughout the year. Um, and uh, which, I, you know, I just think is so significant. I like that, um, like, for instance, with Juneteenth, um, the Juneteenth Agriculture Pavilion, you know, they want to see, you know, just you know, Juneteenth throughout the year, you know, the agricultural pavilion throughout the year, because these are lifestyle changes, you know, we have to um, uh, uh, go back to. And um, I, I just appreciate both of you for um, coming on to Talking Peace. And um, uh, thank you so much. I know you had long days. And um, so thank you for uh, visiting with me and, you know, sharing. And uh, thank you for all the work that you all are doing and have done. Um, so make sure you all, you know, visit uh, Zawadi's books on uh, Jefferson address again. 1382 Jefferson Avenue. 1382. And make sure you visit the official Kwanzaa Committee page. Uh, Buffalo Kwanzaa Committee page on Facebook uh, to know what the schedule is and what's going on uh, for this year. And you all have been listening to Talking Peace with the Western New York Peace Center. I am your host, Deidre Email, and we have been Talking Peace, Justice, Love, and Unity uh, today and, um, and every day. So uh, thank you, Nine. 
91.3 FM and Richard Wicca. And until next time, peace and love. Peace and love. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking us to come. Yeah. You. I learned so much tonight, you know. She's a wealth of knowledge, I tell you, for sure. I love it. I love it. You know, and I I, I know Miss Sharon probably tired of me because I keep knocking on the door like, can you can you come out to do this? Can you come out to do this? <laughs> what about this? So <laughs> Yeah, that that you know, it's like because like I said, she has the history in the beginning. I don't have that, you mm -hmm. know. It's better to have, um, like I said, the ones that started it here. I mean, we're, we're carrying the torch, but that's the wealth right there, the information. Exactly. And it's so nice that you inter you interviewed uh, you interviewed Mother Holly yesterday. Yes. Uh, what was it for? What um, show? So for promo. So what's going to happen is um, I did Miss Holly, Karima Amin, uh, Mother Taliba, and that's going to launch and be on our social media. So like a save the date, Kwanzaa is here and expressing what they felt was their meaning or importance of Kwanzaa. So I, my editing team is literally editing it as we speak. They keep hitting me up. That's why my phone kept going out. I'm like, I'm on the call, please. But <laughs> they're working on it. Um, you know, Delilah did a commercial. I did a commercial. So starting tomorrow, the first commercial will go up. So we'll be looping and playing it. Um, we got, like I said, we're doing it a little different as far as marketing because we want more people to know about Kwanzaa. Yeah. We don't want to just keep it to ourselves because like she said, everybody's going out, you know, talking about Christmas, getting ready for Qu Christmas, but it's like, you know, we got something of our own, Kwanzaa. And a lot of people are like, well, what's that? I haven't heard of it or I didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. So this time my focus was really to put a push for people to know and to come and join and participate. Great. So the best thing was to go to the elders who was the source of information as opposed to just creating, you know, some images and a nice little video and putting it out there. I felt like we should see our own people telling the story of Kwanzaa. And so it took a little bit more work and time, um, but that's that was the vision and that's what, we, we, what we're going with, so. Definitely. Our vendors. Ladies, I'm going to say have a good evening. Okay. You I'm going to get off and eat dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Go take care of yourself. Thank All right. You so much. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. <laughs> Thank okay. you, ladies. Thank okay. you. And I'll um try and be at 3 o'clock. If not, I'll see if Emmanuel can come. Okay. Let me know uh, earlier that uh, day. Or both of us will be there for sure. Okay. Yeah, let me know. So okay. Then, um, cause I'm going to be in the, in the, uh, the, um, record in the studio, but, uh, Ms. Gail will be online for the first half and, uh, Ms. Della will be online for the second half. Ms. Gail is out of town, as you know, and Ms. Della is, um, have, having some health issues. So, oh, for she can be online and do the show? Well, on the phone. Oh, can, okay. You know, so she can, you know, they can call in, but I can only have one at a time. You know, on the show, yeah. So okay. we'll we'll have call-ins, yeah. Okay, or maybe I can have see if Emmanuel, if Emmanuel can come the first part, then maybe I can come in after. I don't know how long. I'll find out from my friend how long the Bengali thing is, because to me they sometimes go long, but I'm not really sure because it's a flag raising and it's outside. I can't see it being. Well, remember, we got two more weeks that that we that we're breaking it, you know, down. So like this week is like inch more intro. We started mentioning it last week. So okay. you know, to have, you know, someone from the committee, you know, there to just, you know, kind of share from uh, more about, you know, like why harvest, why first fruits, you know, since we're, you know, lifestyle, health, gardening, you know, so we're kind of in that, um, you know, with that focus, like why the harvest first fruits, you know, uh, type of thing. And um, so, you know, we probably have about five minutes. It's only half an hour. It's not as long as this one is. Yeah. Okay. Then the next week will be like the first 15 minutes or what have you, you know, and then the, the last one, you'll be in the middle of Kwanzaa, you know, to, you know, talk about, you know, more of the principles and what principle, you know, you're celebrating that day uh, on the, I think it's the 29th, what have you, and, you know, the significance of that. So. Okay. Well, I have somebody there to represent. That's for sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you got my number, you know, okay. let me know. 
All right. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. And good seeing you again, Richard. Thanks again. Yep. Okay. Bye. Have a good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Okay. Peace and love.